Welcome back. It's a Wednesday. And here we are. <laughs> yeah, we had so much fun and there was so much content created at Mapperton that we just couldn't squeeze it all into last Sunday's video. So here we are. In the last episode, we went swimming with the American Viscountess in Mapperton's natural swimming pool and we had so much fun with Luke and Julie. In this episode, stick around if you're curious to find out what exactly is a Viscount. And what does a sandwich, a choc ice and a stately home have in common? We also go and check out a rewilding project with some incredible beavers and Crusoe and John meet some very beautiful cows. Also, last week we talked to you a little bit about History Hit. We've put the links again down below just in case you want to go and have another look at it. There's some good discounts there and we've really enjoyed their content too. On Sunday, we'll be heading back to Portugal. So make sure that you hit that subscribe button and click on the little bell to turn on notifications so that you never never miss an update from our channel. Absolutely. Interestingly, over 50% of the people that are watching our channel right now aren't subscribed. If you're one of them, please do consider hitting the subscribe button. It's completely free and it really does make all the difference and help us grow. Absolutely. On with the show. On with the show. We are the newbies, John, Tara and Crusoe, and we've been living an extraordinary life, committed to making our minutes and seconds count. <laughs> For the last two years, we've been living in vans and traveling the world. Something's just happened. I think, I could be wrong, but I think there's two countries. Crusoe has already been to 23 countries on four continents. We have fed giraffe, faced down elephants, kayaked with humpbacks, and played with meerkats. We've taken some of the world's greatest hikes, visited the world's greatest cities, and seen some of nature's greatest spectacles. We even got married by a penguin, but that's another story. Now it's time for our biggest challenge yet. We've bought an abandoned farm in Northern Portugal and our mission is to turn the overgrown wreck into an off-grid sustainable place that we can call home. Join us and follow our journey. Be brave, think big, explore. So we've swam in the swimming pool hung out in the gardens. We've taken a long hike and seen some cows. We have. Now it's time to go inside. And have some tea. With the Viscount and the Viscountess. I can't wait. We're going to ask them some questions like, what's a Viscount? Got things to say. Look who it is, Crusoe. Perfect timing, Julie. Be? Perfect timing. <laughs> All right, should we go inside? Yes, please. Come on, Crusoe. You guys did pick the perfect day. We have, Didn't haven't we? Yeah, so absolutely. Come on, Crusoe. Come on. Come on, best friend. Come on, Come on best friend. Come on, best friend. Let's go. You want to go in forward? I think there are scones like and scones. tea inside. You can make a mess. It will ever be the same again after Crusoe's been in. In fact, and, we should actually talk about yesterday when Julie came to see us, the first thing this child did was ran from the toilet with the toilet brush oh, yeah, I loved and it. brushed the coffee table. <laughs> he was painting. After Honestly, scrumping some apples from her back garden. Never mind. Okay, let's go in. Yeah, come on. All right. Oh, yeah. Wow, Crusoe, look at this. Look at it. It's such a nice place. Look at this. Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, it's... Yeah. Just have this juice. Mm, well, those need to be cleaned. That's my other big project okay. is cleaning tapestries. I imagine that's not just tapestries. Right the that's machine, is it? gone way down on the list okay. because the pool okay. had to come up. Yeah. And so some things had to go down, some things had to go Ooh. up. Should go in here. <gasps> come come in here. see, come see. Bah. So this is oh, the hall. Gosh. And I've seen this on your YouTube channel. Yes, Yes, I have. I've seen you interviewing Luke on those chairs. That's I'm right. pretty sure of it. Yeah. That's right. We always find like different spots that we can sit in. Oh, and oh, Hello. he's we're filming. Luke, Hello. how are you doing? I saw you filming. <laughs> yeah. Why not? <laughs> we're just, um, we're just finishing off a, a conversation with Julia and Luke here. Um, if you want to check that out, go over to um, Mapperton Live where you'll see the whole conversation, um, the tragedy and the excitement of all of it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So uh, I have one question for you guys, and it is very simply, what is a Viscount? What is a oh, Viscount? Well, yeah. Julie has spent 20 years trying to answer that question. <laughs> and I, I, think, I think she's now got an answer. Okay. Well, okay. Oh my goodness, I feel like I'm putting on the show. Well, first of all, it, you pronounced it the right way. Great. So it is Viscount. Listen, I got it wrong the first time around. Um, I did say Viscount. 
So a viscount is really a title that would be given to nobility um, from the monarch uh, at the time. I mean, it doesn't really happen anymore. Mm. Uh, the monarch doesn't necessarily give titles like viscount or earl unless it's within the royal family um, themselves. But you know, back in the day when we had King Charles the First, King Charles the Second, um, Henry the Eighth, even uh, Elizabeth the First, they were handing out titles left, right, and center, because the crown, usually the monarch, was usually quite poor. Yeah. And so many times, people would actually pay for their own titles. But luckily for us, we didn't pay for the title 300 years ago. And it came from the first Earl of Sandwich. King and Queen, Prince and Princess. It's very long-winded, this. I mean, I hope we can get to the point. Duke and Duchess, Marquis and Marchioness, Earl and Countess, Viscount and Viscountess, and then Baron and Baroness is kind of how it works. Is technically also Viscount Hinchingbrook, but that's like a whole episode. I love it. Basic guy, you can just chop can you, can that. Yeah, yeah, I'm not chopping any of it. Yeah, there we go. There you go. Zip all the way through. Guys, yeah. so cool. I, feel, I feel filled with history right now. Anything um, you want to add to that? No. Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> We're done. I think that was, that was all you needed. So do, do, do you inherit the title of Earl? Yes. Is, there, is, it, is it like, is it the actual sandwich or is it the court? No, it is. No. Well, no, 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 no. no. Like, is the so, name so, the Earl of Sandwich, is it, did it come from? The it came, did yeah. he invent sandwiches? He did invent the sandwich. Really? Yeah. Yes. That's pretty cool. But more importantly that is, than that, he invented, just got very excited. He invented, <laughs> he invented, and there's a connection here, he invented oh. the choc ice. The yeah. ice, chocolate ice cream. Is it? Yeah. He was a great so he was, he man. Was chocolate ice cream too. To be fair, the, the Earl of Sandwich sounds a little bit cooler than the Earl of Choc Ice. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I quite like to be called Earl of Choc Ice. That would, that would suit me well. Yes. Yeah. That's so cool. Cruzo is snoring. Snoring. Yeah. Oh, you just yeah. set him to sleep with these hips. <laughs> oh, no. We could have sat and chatted with Julian Luke all day. It was such a fun conversation filled with so much energy and laughter and we enjoyed every minute of it. But Luke had plans for the boys, and after Crusoe had a quick nap, they set off on the estate to see what other projects Mapperton has going on. In particular, John was excited to hear more about an area that's being set aside for rewilding, something we hope to do on our farm in Portugal too. And Crusoe was most excited about a pair of beavers. You can probably hear right now that Mapperton is a hive of energy and busyness. There's so much going on here from the coffee shop to the house to the swimming pool and of course to the other working parts of the business. We are always looking for new ideas and new knowledge that we can take back to Portugal um, when we're heading in that direction, which as everybody now knows will be next week. So heading out with the Viscount himself, will give us that opportunity for a little bit of extra learning and who knows what we're going to see and what we're going to learn. Okay, so um, it's a boys trip out. Uh, Crusoe, Luke and myself are heading out into the estate to have a quick look around. Um, and Luke, you've brought us up to the top part. I think we had a walk here yesterday, Tara and myself. Um, Did you? With Did the you boys. came this far? Yeah, we well, wandered over and, and, and went round yeah. the back, yeah. Um, but you've just pointed out, which we didn't notice yesterday, that you can see the sea from up here. You can see the sea and let's grab some footage of that because it's, uh, it's such a lovely view from yeah. the top. We're, we're heading, we're heading west on the estate now to the farm that is, I say west, when I mean east. East? East indeed. You we're heading east on the estate. <laughs> Been either direction for me. <laughs> and we're, we're going to the, to the farm that is the furthest east and it's called Coltley. Okay. And it's a, uh, it's a small farm, about 200 acres, and you'll see it's got a few ramshackle old buildings in desperate need of, of renewal. Um, part of our plan is to do that, is to start to create more accommodation with these dilapidated barns and unused agricultural buildings. Right. Um, but what we're really trying to do is create a lively and exciting ecotourism opportunity. So for people and their kids like Crusoe to come here 
and experience the great British outdoors. It may not be Botswana with elephants and giraffes, yeah, yeah. but we've got some animals about it. So, in the UK, we've got lots of land that has been used for farming that isn't very productive at all because it's not very good for growing arable and some of it is quite good pasture but it would be better off if it was employed to kind of help restore the lost biodiversity that we have in the UK. The UK is one of the most depleted countries in the G20 in terms of its biodiversity because we've farmed so intensively for so long and now we have an opportunity to do something about that. We're recognising that actually where we've got quite marginal farmland it's not very good for making food. We can follow this model established by a famous estate in Sussex called NEP okay. where they over the last 20 years in many ways replicated the environment that we would have had 10,000 years ago. What would we have seen here 10,000 years ago? Yeah. Trees. We've had, well, we've had trees, we've had scrub, we've had these magnificent cattle called aurochs okay. wandering the countryside, we'd have had wild boar, um, and we would have had wild ponies as well. And they were all functioning in balance with the vegetation. Yeah. So you didn't have too many animals and you didn't have too much vegetation. Yeah. And the whole ecosystem thrived as a result. And so that's what NEP managed to do over here in Sussex. And if they can do it in Sussex, we can do it in Dorset. Definitely. And the first step has been to bring these magnificent cows because they're not traditional cattle. These are called white park cattle. They're the oldest English breed of cattle. There's only about a thousand of them in the country and they've got these magnificent horns and they these do. wonderful white bodies and, and black um, eyes and ears. And Beautiful. you can see we've had some calves. Love year. it. With a great estate like Mapperton comes great responsibility and it was truly inspiring to hear the passion that Luke has for the rewilding project. The whole ethos and drive behind the decisions they're making for this space is so aligned with our own plans in Portugal. And the next project that Luke shared with John was seriously exciting, even if they didn't get to meet the real stars in person this time. Very muddy, isn't it? muddy because we are at the beaver enclosure and I don't know whether you've ever seen beavers before I haven't no but we won't see them today oh, oh so sorry they're not <laughs> they're nocturnal yeah okay. so they they're hidden away but we've we've built this fence because in the UK when you release a beaver you have to do it in an enclosed environment okay and so the beavers are safely in here there's a pair of them a male and a female. They're about two years old and they used to be all over the country. Right. 400 years ago they were hunted to extinction Shame. because people wanted their pelts and they wanted their scent glands. Right. And um, But slowly they're coming back. Some people are happy, other people not so okay. um, because beavers do build dams and dams create wetland and if that causes flooding on your field as a farmer, yeah. you're understandably quite upset about that. So mm. where beavers are out in the wild, they have to be managed. You've got to be prepared to, to take the dams down and, and move them if necessary. Anyway, here it doesn't matter because they're, they're safely here. And we've got them because we want to see what they do to the ecosystem in this wood. You know, whether they can build wetlands, which again is fabulous for invertebrates and in turn fabulous for birds. Um, and um, and also see what they do to the vegetation because beavers like chopping down trees. So we'll go and have a look and yeah. see what they've done. Brilliant. Right, here we are in the beaver enclosure. And um, we're going to go down and look at the lake. It's not really a lake, it's more of a pond. Okay. And see what they've done. And also what they've done to a couple of trees. In fact, you can see one here. You come over. Yes. There's a large maple. And you can see that the beavers have been having a good old gnaw. Okay. Russo, come and look. Come and look. Damn it. Come and look at this. Come and look at this. That.
so we've come down to the edge of the pond where we can see a couple of absolutely brilliant things. First of all, that the beavers have been really having a go at this tree and it's been about a quarter munched even since I was last here a couple of days ago. This tree is coming down and then if you go further across here you can see the dam that they've built on the other side all the way along all those sticks all the mud they transport stones I mean these are astonishing creatures they're engineers and they've built that wow. dam that's caused the water level to rise and they know when they when they take a tree down like this they know which way it's going to go so they want it to go that way um, and that I think is going to divide up the the uh, the pond of course it also risks completely destroying their dam they might not have thought of that <laughs> that's not that <laughs> So that's a wrap from Mapperton. We so enjoyed our time and I'm very, very confident that sometime in the future, Julie, Luke, Tara, Crusoe, Sawyer, myself will all be back in the same room having a bit of fun together again. I personally cannot wait. They are two of the nicest people we've had the pleasure to meet in a long time. Absolutely. If you didn't watch their, their episode last Sunday, do go and have a look at Mapperton Live. It is a absolute hoot in which Crusoe <laughs> causes complete chaos in their city. But for now, we have got a lot of packing to do and a lot of preparing before we hit the road back to the farm. So please do, if you've enjoyed the video, hit that thumbs up and give us a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave us a comment because we love hearing from you and we will see you on Sunday on back our way back to Portugal. Yay! <laughs> Cheers, folks. Cheers.